Hey, welcome back, guys. Uh, so, here we're continuing the airbrushing on the guitar. If, uh, if you've been following the series, you may notice that I sound a lot different now. That is because I went and purchased a new microphone, so hopefully this will help with the quality of my voiceovers from now on. So here what I've done is I've cut the guy's tattoo, um, the father's tattoo, out of my reference photo. Obviously my image is the same size as the reference photo, that's what I used to get uh, get it all mapped out. So I cut his tattoo out and I'm just using that to go ahead and spray it in because it's a very simple uh, thing here, it's just going to be a straight black essentially. I do a little bit of shading work on it to emulate a couple of the colors that he has in it. Uh, I believe originally his tattoo is uh, black with some blue in it. So a little bit of shading work, I'm, I'm reasonably careful with it. But essentially the whole thing goes on um, just through the mask that I've created with my razor blade on that piece of paper. So you can see that that's turned out pretty nicely. And now I'm just going to continue with the shading work. I know I've said this before, this this isn't really an airbrush tutor tu uh, sorry, tutorial. rather. Um, so I won't go into too much detail about what I'm doing, but mostly I'm just giving some shape to, uh, to the arm there and to the baby's body. So as I finish this all up, I'm, uh, I'm just doing the last, the last bits of shading here. It'll be a couple minutes of this. Then we're going to start into... Uh, working to render out the hair a little bit more. It's pretty light right now. It's not very uh, realistic. So we'll get to work on that part next after I'm finished kind of the finishing touches on the faces. I like to do the hair last. I'm not entirely sure why. I think it's uh, it's probably due to the contrast. I don't want to go ahead and get the hair, for example, too dark uh, compared to the rest of the face or go in and do it too lightly and then and then realize that after I've done the face and the shading there I have to go back and do the hair after. So now that's kind of what I'm rendering in here. I'm doing the uh, the darker shadows and getting the hair all finished up before I start filling in the background. So I'm hoping that uh, by doing these voiceovers I'll be able to make these videos more efficient. I'm, I'm just kind of talking about this now while I do the hair because there's not much else to explain there. Um, but this way I, I don't really have to stop as often and explain stuff and then do it. I know that's basically been my MO if you will uh, up until this point. I've always kind of explained what I'm going to do and then done it. So with the addition of this new microphone and, uh, and the voiceovers to uh, the way that I produce videos I'm hoping I can make things a little more efficient because I've gotten a few complaints that I talk too much. So now I can talk too much uh, and still get the videos done more efficiently and give you guys the information in a, a, a more expedient manner. So you can see here I've, I'm just kind of putting in a bit of a vignette. I went through a couple renditions of this um, with a lighter vignette and then a heavier one and then eventually uh, a completely blacked out background kind of sending pictures of it to the customer and giving them the opportunity to choose what they wanted really for the vignette. Um, obviously the uh, the option being generally to go darker every time as opposed to coming back. I didn't really want to send them a black background and have them ask me to turn it white. That would have been awful and would have added more paint than we want. Remember we're trying to keep these finishes thin. So really the airbrushing isn't going to change uh, the thickness in a notable way because you add so little paint at a time. But if you're going in and changing the entire background color more than once, then you're looking at adding a, a what might be considered a noticeable amount of paint. So I try to avoid that. So here I'm just doing the uh, finishing touches on some of the shading, trying to make sure I've got his ear right. The eyes and teeth were kind of a uh, a bit tedious as well but they're all dealt with at this point and I've got that very light vignette in there so once I've got the uh, the details sorted out what you'll see me do is go in at the customer's request and try out the much heavier kind of burst effect that I went for um, and then like I said the final product ends up being with the background completely blacked out 
but uh, oh, there I am adjusting the camera. Well, that's very professional, but yeah, here we go. I'm putting in my very dark vignette. So what I'm using to do this, because I need enough precision here to get around the, uh, the characters of the picture without accidentally spraying over them. So I obviously can't go in there with a paint gun or even a touch-up gun for that matter. So I'm using an airbrush, but a large nozzle airbrush, a 0.5 millimeter nozzle which actually can have a fairly significant spray pattern um, and it allows me to get this done first of all at a reasonable speed which is nice and also um, with a reasonably even look around the outside if I were doing this with a detail airbrush I'd end up with a bunch of very fine lines kind of overlapping a little bit and it really wouldn't look as good so I'm using the larger airbrush and I'm just gradually putting in that large uh, vignette that covers a lot of the guitar which is often what you see when there are burst effects done on acoustic guitars. You'll likely notice as I proceed into some of these uh, yeah like right here as I proceed into a bigger area that the paint does appear to be going on a little bit streaky again because I'm using an airbrush so that's kind of the balancing game that you play um, when you're trying to coat a large area with something that is also designed to do small areas but I'll go through and touch that up and you can get a wider pattern obviously by just uh, dropping away from the item a little bit and spraying from a little further and applying more paint so when I get into these tight areas like I'm doing here I've, I've got to get the airbrush in nice and close and I, I apply less paint at a time and I apply it to a smaller area but then as I back off to spray these other areas you can see I'm, I'm quite far away from the guitar with the airbrush and I'm just trying to lay it out more evenly into a larger area. And that's kind of how I how I finish up this vignette or uh, burst effect if you prefer is just from a fair distance away here on the areas where I don't need to be as detailed so that I can go ahead and get that more even finish and then later uh, <laughs> I end up having to paint in the entire thing. Alright guys, so I didn't film a lot of the airbrushing there because, well, this isn't an airbrushing tutorial and it's kind of boring to watch me just spray stuff with an airbrush all day. Anyway, uh, the airbrushing on this guitar is finally finished. It's time now to move on to the clear coat. So I think what we're going to do is call that a wrap for this video and in the next video we'll move on to that stage. We still have to clear coat this guitar, um, sand it down for polishing, polish it, and then it should be good to go. So join me next time and uh, we'll get this finished up. Hey guys, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up so it'll be easier for other people to find and subscribe to stay up to date with all the cool projects I got coming out. Also a big shout out to Sovereign King who does the vast majority of the music for my channel, way better on guitar than I am. And to Troy from Noise Guitar Mods, I'll put the link in the description. The man is a great guitar tech and he's taught me most of what I know about how the internals of these things work. Thanks for watching guys, hope you enjoyed yourselves, see you next time.